What's going on, everyone? So I, I repainted my boat again. I painted it once. It came out pretty good. But then I had to, like, tear aside parts of the hull up to reframe my boat. And uh, so I screwed up the initial paint job, which is a pretty pro spray paint job. And that was done out of some spray paint that I can't even find anymore. Like, it was, it's gone. I guess it was, like, a promotional thing. This stuff was awesome. That Krylon Automotive, I can't find it anywhere. Like, it's... It's missing in action. So then I, after I redid my boat, I just primered it. And then I, I mean, I didn't sand it enough because it, it orange peeled when I primered it. And so I didn't sand it enough to get the surface smooth. So when I went to spray paint it to try and have it match my truck, it wouldn't do it. It like, if the surface is not smooth, you can't get a gloss surface. So what I had is a bunch of like satin spots inside gloss. And so I just kind of gave up and just coated it and just left it that way it didn't decal it didn't do anything because it just wasn't like ready so now i'm tired of how it looks i want my boat black again because it looked awesome when it was black got new decals from the merch shop you can check those out and we're gonna go ahead and just redo it i'm gonna show you what i did this time i didn't sand it down to the bone because i, I got pretty good primer that total bolt uh, aluminum barrier coat stuff is awesome and so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna sand it down to that make sure it's all smooth and then respray paint it All right, guys, this is what I used. This stuff was recommended to me after I couldn't find the Krylon 2 Park Acrylic Automotive Enamel. I went and got this stuff, and I gotta say, pretty good quality out of the deal. One can lasted aside. I did three coats, so I went through, burned through three cans. This is the actual primer, which is way better. I mean, they do make aluminum primer that you can spray. This stuff is just so tough once it's on there. I mean, yeah, it orange peeled, yeah, it caused me problems, you have to re-sand it so it actually looks glossy, but I tell you, if you don't mind sanding and putting in the work, this is probably the best primer you're ever going to get. This stuff is tough as nails. I mean, this is only one part, it actually comes in a two-part kit that you mix together. Use an orbital sander. You're supposed to use 220 grit. Because of what I was doing, I used 120 to get to the main bulk, and then I went and polished it off with 220 on some of the spots. Just if you use 220, you'll, you'll go through like 10 of these pads. And like honestly, one of these at 120 will almost get to the entire side by itself where you have to switch a pad. And also, you're gonna have to block it out. Just get a just get a block. That's regular 220 grit wet sanding paper, and that's what I really touched up and topped off and and prepped everything for, which did pretty darn good job. You also need painters tape and possibly some painters plastic, even unless you want to end up painting the bottom of the boat like I did, which I would recommend. All right, so I'm using the 120 grit sandpaper on this orbital sander. And I'm just very, very carefully, very lightly going over it because the 120 will chew right through onto the bare metal. And we really can't afford any bare metal spots. We will get a few, it's unavoidable, but we can get more or less most of this so we don't have to reprimer it. That's what I'm going for. Just trying to get the smooth finish. So I can get it smooth, I might not have to take all the paint down to the primer to get it smooth. In fact, there's some spots where the paint will actually help well, where the primer initially orange peeled. The spray paint would stick right onto this if I just prepped the surface of the spray paint and then painted it, it would happen, which is a pretty good deal considering if you want to repaint it in a year, you can. I think the one thing that I, it's my favorite thing about this spray paint specifically is that it didn't have a really quick dry time. Like some of these spray paints you use, it dries in a second. This stuff has an actual 15 minute dry time in the ideal temperatures, which is like 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And it allows you to go up and down because once you start a side, you need to finish it. You need to have the overlapping seams. So you go, you go down one side, you go back up, back down but in between the sides you need to make sure those overlap and they look seamless you don't want any because if you wait until one side dries and then you try and go back over it later you will have a overlay of mist and you'll tell okay so that was a hell of a first coat 
I had to admit to it. I had to sand it down pretty bad so it would even gloss like this because last time the problem was I laid the primer on too thick. And I thought I laid it on thin enough, but then it orange pilled. It was really hard to get it to not orange pill with a roller unless you laid it on super, super thin for like millions of layers. Just, I was over it. I just needed a paint job. And uh, then I tried to spray paint over it thinking it would shine like this and it didn't. It pulled in and it sucked in. There's still some spots where it tried to where I got a, I mean, thank heaven I got three big freaking cans that'll do this whole thing reason we had to do it you can see it over here you can see some of the orange pill and how it was really hard to get this part to shine there was there was like dull satin spots inside the gloss and no matter how many coats there's like six seven cans on this side just this little strip and i could never get it to shine no matter how many i put on there so thank heaven and i think even here i cut it close where i could have done a better job i just was afraid to scrape off too much primer and go down to the bare metal which is going to cause me problems but this will be we're just gonna pay more attention on the other side and when we do this again, I have to go get more spray paint and we have to obviously stand the other side. It's looking good. I got these decals from Jason. He makes all the decals for our store. So if you go to dbnation.net and you search gear, he makes pretty much any custom decal you want. If you have something that our site doesn't offer, you can always contact him directly on Facebook or Instagram at TV Nation Shirts and Decals, and he can make you some custom stuff like this. These go on pretty seamlessly most of the time. Generally, I have a heat gun and a squeegee. I can't find the squeegee, so I'm not even gonna try and heat it up. Um, I have a few problems here. These rivets, these very big giant bulk rivets, give you a few problems. So you might have to go in there. If you don't have a heat gun or a squeegee, you can go in there and very, very, very tactfully drain any air bubbles that get in there with a very sharp hobby knife or a little pin. But the result, pretty good, either way. All right, so I really hate painting. I hate, actually, painting's not so bad. It's the sanding, it's the prep work, and the fact that this is all 90% prep work. That's what painting is. So we are, there it is. Maybe people will go and visit it. Maybe you'll go and visit it. Ha ha. Well, then it came out all right. Not bad for a spray paint job. The last one lasted pretty long time was probably more durable paint than this is, but I guess the recommendation from the Facebook group saying to get the high performance enamel stuff actually works pretty good. Gotta admit, thank you for the tip, Jason. Thank you for the decals also. Yeah, this is all right. This is after a day, this is 24 hour cure with the decals on. I'm not gonna put the other decals on until I find my squeegee and I get a heat gun and squeegee it. I'm not dealing out with what I dealt with earlier. And, uh, but you know, the stretching around the rivets, that went fairly well. We're right there, we'll have to tackle that one, dang it. Oh, well, actually that was all it took. There it goes. I like it. I think this will, this will turn heads, pop eyes. I love the green on the black. It seems to be a growing trend for us and the crew. I got all my people right there. It's about as much room as I have for the roll call. So I had just the right amount of people for the roll call. It was like pretty key. 
I did carry this over on accident over here, not paying attention, so I cut it out and made it look like it belongs there, but really, it's because I screwed that up. If you guys only know that. Okay, and for this side. That's about as much motivation as I have to actually sand. I hate sanding. I think sanding, I have to block it out too. Like I can't just, I can get as much as I can with the orbital sander and then I have to eventually go in there with the 220 grit sandpaper and a block and really make it like even nicer and prepped it more for paint. And then I gotta get in between all those little rivets. Oh God, that's gonna suck. Ugh. Whatever. But you know, it's, uh, it's good to go. The boat will be ready for the spring. We will likely also re-turf this. This is the Amazon turf. You know, it lasted pretty good for a year. I did beat the Everloon tar out of it. It is a little dirty. This is me, this is it before I cleaned it off. And it's all right, it did okay. It did okay. You know, the Amazon turf was a good run. It was a good learning trial. It was good for the experience to self-route the turf, but we have better stuff on our site, the Orthodeck. And I'm gonna get a little bit darker turf that matches the carpet. And so it'll pull better and it will be less showy. Like this is a super bright gray turf. It shows everything. Like just say, look at the little spot there. Say, hey, look at me. So I want to get rid of that crap. And um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Pretty stoked about the whole thing. Stay tuned and wait for it, guys. It's all coming. <laughs>